Okay, here we go again. Our uh, perilous friend is once again suspended from a rope. This time he finds himself uh, hanging from a rope that is threaded over a massless, frictionless pulley. And then the rope is tied off somewhere uh, with an angle theta 1 relative to the horizontal uh, direction. So there are a couple of questions here. First is, what are the relative magnitudes of the tension uh, in the left rope? That is where the monkey's holding. And in the right rope, the one that's tied to the ground. So if, if this is a T2 on the left and this is T1 on the right, uh, what what are what relation is there between those um, tensions? And then the second question is, uh, if the monkey's hanging there, um, what are the components of the X and Y um, forces in the in the rope? Uh, so, in, in the components of uh, T1. So as b before, to answer this question, uh, we would want to isolate or separate uh, the area of action from the universe, from the rest of the world. And in so doing, we reveal uh, what's going on inside, if you will, these ropes. Uh, once we cut through the rope, we'll see the tension in the rope revealed. And uh, we can show that in our, our free body diagram. So maybe, I, so uh, the first question there said, uh, well, what's the relationship between T1 and T2? And um, we haven't revealed the tension force in the in the pulley at all. And what's missing here? Yes, when we took away our perilous friend, his weight now acts on this rope. So the first question really plays to the underlying physics or common sense about the situation. What are the relative magnitudes of T1 and T2? Um, <laughs> the tension in the rope on the, the left has to be equal to the tension in the rope on the right because if it's not um, then then we've got a dynamic problem and not a, not a static problem. So if the, rope, if the rope is motionless, then it must be the case that T2 is equal to Mg And again, in order for everything to be stationary at rest, um, T2 has to equal T1. So the answer to this first question is that, that T1 and T2 uh, have, to have the same value. And in fact, uh, as is shown here, uh, the tension in that rope would be equal to um, the, the weight since, since there's no motion. And the answer here is T1 has to equal to T2, which is uh, from our free body diagram is equal to the weight uh, of the monkey. So that's the answer to part one. Uh, once we realize T1 equals T2, then the, the question of finding the um, magnitudes of those tensions 
is uh, just a question of the trigonometry there that uh, the x direction force is going to equal to T1 it's the adjacent side over the opposite side so T1 cosine theta will be the x force and T1 sine theta will be the y force uh, maybe we can expand that out and what we need to do is decompose that force into its two components Yeah, let's just cheat that over. That angle theta is uh, in between there. So down here we have T1 cosine theta because it's the adjacent side and T1 sine theta because it's the opposite side. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine, adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So I think then uh, we were tasked to find numerical values for, um, for these. Um, if we know theta 1 is 30 degrees. Uh, so uh, we can do that. We'll just uh, so um, T1x is equal to um, T1 cosine theta and so that's equal to mg sine theta cosine theta so for a five kilogram monkey in a nine point eighty one meter per second squared acceleration field about 42.5 uh, newtons kilogram meter per second squared is one newton and likewise change all the numbers uh, to protect the innocent here uh, T1Y will be T1 sine going to be 0.5 times minutes. okay so once again monkey saves the day